everyone, and welcome to this webinar organized by Doxty in partnership with UCD. My name is Carolina, nice to meet you all, and I'll be your host for today's event on behalf of Doxity. I see here that the first people are already starting to join in. We are going to wait a few minutes before starting to allow everyone to connect. In the meantime, feel free to say hi in our chat here on Zoom, and please tell us where you are from since we are very curious. First of all, I want to thank everyone for joining us and thank our panelists for being here with us today. I want to introduce you all to uh, Yola Mar, the International Student Liaison, and also to uh, the other people here that if they want, they can tell us their role and their name so I can pronounce them correctly. Um, I hi. Hi there, I'm Mariette Mulvey. I'm the admissions manager for the MBA program here at Smurfit School in UCD. Um, and thank you very much for coming here today. And I'm also here to answer any of your questions that you have uh, this afternoon. Thank you. Hello, uh, I am Sagar Pushpani. I'm a student here at Smurfit Business School uh, pursuing full-time MBA. Uh, yeah, any questions, any discussions we can have in this session? Thank you so much. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Purva Deshmukh and currently I'm pursuing full-time MBA at UCD Smurfit Business School. Uh, welcome here and going forward, let's look up what the discussion goes and how I can help you. Thank you. Hi everybody, this is Vinamrita Pandey here. I'm also uh, pursuing full-time MBA. I am from India, but I've been raised in Dubai. So any questions related to these regions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you. Fantastic. Over to you, Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, of course, uh, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here. Together with our panelists, we are going to learn what it's like to study uh, at a leading English-speaking university in Europe's vibrant city of Dublin, home to the world's top companies. And you'll also have the possibility to interact with our speakers and ask them questions. Talking about that, I'd like to remind you that after the presentation, we will have a Q&A session where you'll be able to ask direct questions to the panelists. So don't be shy and just type all of your questions in the Q&A section here on Zoom, and we'll go through them at the end of the webinar. Also, for those of you interested in receiving a certificate of attendance by Doxity for this free masterclass, stay tuned because we will post the link to get the certificate at the end of the session. So I think that we are able to start now. Welcome to those who just joined us. I'll share with you a brief video and then I can leave the floor to our panelists and we can start. Everybody's different. We come from different places. And we all want different things. I want to grow my career. I want to make a difference. I want my research to have an impact. But we all have one thing in common. We want to be somewhere we can fulfill our ambition. Not just a graduate business school, but a global community full of people who want to go further. Push harder. Achieve more. Do things differently. With the faculty producing cutting edge research that's making a difference. Changing how we think. A community that's making its mark on Ireland and the world. At Ireland's highly ranked and triple accredited business school, offering internationally recognized MBA and business master's programs. Distinctively located in Dublin, one of the friendliest most exciting cities in the world and home to the world's leading companies. A local campus with a global network of alumni where students connect with industry leaders and each other. The faculty address the biggest problems of today, creating real solutions for the real world. We'll all end up with different careers. In different places. 
making an impact in business and society. We're all different. But we'll always have one thing in common. UCD Michael Smurfit Graduate Business School. Creating a better future. Okay, thank you so much. So I, um, without, without further ado, I'm now leaving the floor to Mairead for their present, her presentation. I'm going to share my screen and see you later. Enjoy. Thank you, Caroline. Hello everybody and as I said welcome along today to find out a little bit about Smurfit School here at UCD um, and a little bit about Ireland and what it's like to study in Dublin. So today we're the title of our presentation or my presentation is Accelerate Your Career through Smurfit School and um, doing the full-time MBA program. Next slide please. So as I said, we have done our introduction, so I'll be hosting a presentation. Then we have my colleague Yola, who's our International Student Support Officer, to tell you a little bit about relocating to Ireland and to Dublin and what it's like to study here um, at Smurfit School, followed by um, a very uh, interesting panel um, who will be here to tell you what it's like to actually study on the ground doing the full-time MBA and again answer any of your questions and then subsequently the floor will be open to you to answer any questions that we haven't already done before now. Next slide please. So basically it's to start off with um, Smurfit School is in the top 1% of business schools in uh, globally ranked uh, across the globe. So there are 16,000 business schools globally across the world and UCD Smurfit School is in the top 1%. So we have a very internationally recognized global MBA and um, it's, as I said, it gives you that um, scope that it, it's, you know, it's recognized and it's a quality MBA um, and it, it, the quality MBA that is recognized everywhere, mainly around the world. But as I said, in the top one percent. We have a triple, triple crown accreditation. We were the first business school in Ireland to gain that through um, AC, CSB, AMBA and Equus. Um, again, going back to the internationally recognised programme, this is an Ireland's top ranked business school. Next slide, please. So basically, our full-time MBA is currently ranked 91st in the world. We have a part-time executive MBA, mainly for domestic students who are working here in Ireland, and that's 64th in the world. That's through the Financial Times. The Economist Intelligence Unit uh, has ranked our full-time MBA 82nd in the global rankings, and the executive MBA 57th in the global rankings. And then finally, the QS World University rankings, we're somewhere between 111 to 120 in the global rankings for the full-time MBA and the executive MBA, we are slightly less. We're 58th or slightly more, should I say. Now, it's important to say at this stage that UCD in general is ranked number one in Ireland for graduate employability. That's based on the QS graduate employability rankings. And UCD is also ranked the number one university in Ireland in the US News Global University rankings. So we have a very high uh, employability rate, I suppose, and a very good reputation that carries us in terms of our graduates gaining employment with the world's top companies, basically, which a lot of them are, the headquarters are located here in Ireland, particularly in Dublin. Next slide, please. So just a little bit about where we're located in Ireland, if you're not familiar with Ireland or you're not familiar with Dublin. So we have a really lovely location, I suppose, is what I could say. We're about five miles, eight kilometres from the city centre. And the city centre in Dublin, is it's very bustling. It's very cosmopolitan and um, a busy place, but it's still got a nice relaxed vibe and a lot of, you know, cafe culture and a lot of nice uh, social 
bars and, and hub spots to, to get involved in. But we're slightly outside of it, which is nice. So it's a little bit more relaxed and um, peaceful, uh, I suppose, where we are. We're about 10 minutes walk from the the coast. So we're right beside the sea. And as you can see there in the background, the campus is it's very green and it's very historic. It's a, a historic building. And um, again, it's got a really nice atmosphere. It was originally a teaching college. Um, um, and a, a church actually it was a, it was owned by um, the Catholic Church um, historically but um, it's it's slightly different and it's been compared to you know a business school like Harvard where it's standalone um, and it's really nice green relaxed surroundings and just to add as well there's very good transport links across uh, around here we have train links and bus links plus we're about three kilometers from our main campus in UCD so it's it's we're not on the campus but we're very close to it and that's uh, a much bigger busier probably a little bit more frenetic in terms of what's you know there's 30,000 students there so it's a lot busier and you have access to all the facilities there but basically in terms of your classes and um your tutorials and um, your formal teaching they're here on the campus in Smurfit next slide please these are just um, <clears throat> an example, uh, some photographs to give you an idea of what the school looks like. So you can see nice, we there's been like a lot of investment in terms of bringing the building up to date and having state of the art facilities. It's bright, it's modern. As I said, it's probably a mixture of contemporary modern with the traditional and historic. So you can see that there from the photographs uh, that are in front of you. Next slide, please. OK, just a little bit about Ireland and its economy. Um, Ireland has Europe's fast and growing economy now for five years in a row. Um, we still and currently have, despite having a really strong, uh, having had strong economic growth over the past, you know, three, five years, that has continued uh, this year and, and will continue here, you know, we would hope from here on in for the next few years. Uh, we have three times higher gro uh, growth rate than the EU average. Our Unemployment rate is at a record no, low. It's about 4.2% at the moment. And this would be considered negligible unemployment. So basically, that's a, a situation of full employment. So a lot of demand for workers, um, particularly skilled workers. Um, and as we said before, you know, Dublin is uh, a, tech, a technico technological hub, if I can speak correctly today. Um, and they're, you know, with a lot of the headquarters for um, many, many of the, the large multinational IT companies and technical companies. Um, so there's a big demand there. Um, so t essentially, we have a full employment economy. Next slide, please. Um, what I just alluded to with the previous slide, yeah, we are known as Dublin is known as the Silicon Valley of Europe. Um, as I said, it's a major, you know, uh, hub for European headquarters for all the social media companies, a lot of the, the tech companies, a lot of the consulting companies around the world. Um, we also have a very significant presence in, term of in terms of pharmaceutical companies and biopharma companies, and they're located all around Ireland, not just in Dublin. So Cork would be another, it's the second largest city in Ireland. It would have a big hub for the pharma and biopharma companies, as would Galway, which is on the west coast of Ireland and, and the third largest city in the Republic of Ireland. Um, and again, big demand there. They're very, you know, there's a lot of innovation going on in that uh, sphere um, and again a lot of demand for skilled employees and again just to give an idea or an example shall we say Pfizer announced a further um, investment into Ireland of 1.2 billion um, euro last year now that's obviously going to be over a couple two three four years but that's the type of um investment that you you we are seeing i suppose in terms of particularly the the pharma and biopharma industries industry next slide please okay Part of doing the MBA uh, here in Smurfit School, um, or, or should I say a, a strong 
criteria why people choose to do their MBA in Smurfit School and come to Ireland is because of the networking opportunities. Um, basically, the, there is a huge alumni um, group that have done um, their MBA here in Smurfit or you know, graduated from Smurfit School, there's 107,000. And we highly encourage um, all our students and all our graduates to connect together. That alumni is located globally around the world. Um, plus, obviously, the networking opportunities you get directly from your classmates on the MBA programme, your fellow students on the executive MBA programme, and indeed the master's students that are here in our graduate school. Um, in terms, of just there's a, a caption there, Ireland, two degrees of separation um, in the world. Uh, there's a, a phrase known as we're all sick. You know, there's six degrees of separation from one person to the next. And I suppose that's the idea that people are six or fewer social connections removed from anyone else in the world. In Ireland, it's two degrees of separation. So it makes it more feasible to, you know, meet with people, connect with people, um, increase your network um, strategically, I suppose, in terms of your employability um, and opportunities that might come your way. And just to give you um, an indication, just to give you an indication, uh, there we have a photograph of Martin Shanahan, who welcomed the CEO of Apple, Tim Cook, to Dublin recently. And Martin is an adjunct professor here at Smurfit School, which is, um, as I said, an example of how Smurfit has, you know, very strong corporate links and connections. And that's just, you know, a photograph to uh, reflect that, basically. Uh, next slide, please. OK, here we have some of the top employers that our graduates work for in uh, the top companies, I suppose, around the world. So as you can see, they include a lot of the consulting companies, a lot of the social media companies, a lot of IT companies and um, Meta, Accenture, Google, KPMG. These are by and large the companies that and organizations that our graduates gain employment in. But having said that, there we, you know, we're a tech hub, so there's a lot of startup opportunities as well. But just to give you an idea of where um, mainly our graduates uh, gain employment after they've graduated. Next slide, please. Okay, part I suppose um a unique um facet of our program here on the MBA is that we have a de dedicated career team purely and exclusively working with the MBA class, particularly the lady in the middle, whose name is Bernie Burke, and she's the careers manager for the MBA class. Um, but the, she also has uh, her two colleagues as well, who are both specialised careers managers, um, and we, they have other support staff that are basically their their reason in life is to or their reason in work should I say is to make sure that our MBA class are you know put on the right pathway to fulfill their potential after they graduate as as a, a, an MBA graduate and gain the job get the, the get the job that they'd like in the area and sector that they desire I suppose but we can talk about that a little bit further on in the presentation next slide please OK, just, this is just a, a quick overview of the curriculum on the MBA. So you can see that the programme starts in August. Uh, this year it will be starting, I think the date is to be confirmed, but I think it's the 27th of August. You need to be here on the 27th of August because there's a foundation week. And that's where, you know, there's a lot of orientation and induction and you're meeting your classmates, you're meeting the faculty. Um, and the teaching also starts straight away and there's skills workshops that commence that week as well. So I would just make the, the point very clearly that you do need to be here that week. Um, and you can see that the, there the list of what's covered in the MBA Foundation Week. Then we have the autumn semester. You can see the core modules, the spring semester and the summer semester, and they all have different core modules. They also have several options modules which is interesting because I think our students really appreciate the fact that we have so many, you know, options modules to choose from and everything isn't, you know, absolutely compulsory, I suppose, in terms of uh, everything being a core module. 
Now, what I'd like to bring to your attention, talking about the curriculum, is probably um, an as the, one of the more interesting aspects of the the curriculum, and that's the international trips that our full time MBA class go on every week. Um, there are three opportunities to travel internationally during your here your year here at uh, Smurfit School. It starts off with the option. You don't have to. You could do it here at Smurfit, but to do the GNAM week. And the GNAM is basically um, the Global Network for Advanced Management. That's what it stands for. And there's 32 business schools around the world where students at those business schools get the opportunity to go to one of the other business schools and study for a week and meet students from everywhere around the world, essentially. So those uh, universities that are on, it's quite a prestigious group, the, the GNM group. Um, it includes IE in Spain, ESMT in Berlin, Yale and Berkeley in the US, in the United States and Oxford in the UK. So it's a it's a really uh, interesting and valuable, I suppose, um, component of our MBA in terms of just giving you that extra breadth of experience in terms of going somewhere else to study and meet different students and to experience what another campus is like. Then we have um, our international business module, um, which is both the next tri trips are actually compulsory. Yet you need to go on them because they're credited. So we have our int international business module and that's um, uh, an international trip this year. Um, and the guys on the panel are heading off in a couple of weeks. They're going to Singapore. So basically, that's um, a trip where the full class goes. Some of the part time class go as well and some of the faculty staff go also. And you spend the week uh, learning about lots of different companies in that particular uh, market. So this time it will be Singapore, where these companies are giving presentations and insights into what it's like to do business internationally from where they are and just giving their perspective um, in terms of the differences and what to be aware of. And because the world is, I suppose, such a global place now and vast, vast, vast majorities, majority of companies um, trade internationally, any exposure internationally and how to do business abroad is um, hugely valuable and beneficial. So that's the first trip. And then there is also additionally an international consulting um, project, which our class do every year for a week. And this year the class is going to Lisbon in June. So that's um, where they get an actual project to work on. They have a week to complete it or four days, I think, and then they get a day off to relax and enjoy the country that they're in and their surroundings. But uh, that's also part of the programme. So as you can see, it's very varied. Um, it's quite intense um, in terms of the programme being a year. A lot of full time MBAs are two years. Some of them are actually more than two years. So the Smurfit MBA is, I won't say unique because it's not unique, but it's one of the fewer ones that, that managed to do a full time MBA, you know, a student manages to do the full time MBA in one year, get the qualification. It's a high quality MBA. Um, they It's, as I said, compacted, I suppose, into one year, but the result of that is that it's an intense year. It's a busy year. There's a lot going on. You need to be very engaged. You need to be very committed. Um, and then, as you can see, each semester, there's going to be, a, you know, a trip abroad um, or something totally different. So by and large, the the year flies. It goes really quickly, um, but full of interest and learning and um, involvement, I suppose, in lots of different things. Um, Next slide, please. OK, this is uh, just what I was going to touch on or what I mentioned earlier in terms of our leadership and employability advancement program known as LEAP. This is what our careers, our MBA careers manager, Bernie Burke, looks after. So basically, it's about developing your leadership um your leadership and employability skills to be at the level that would be required and be expected from an MBA graduate. We are unique in Ireland in terms of develop or delivering 
a module like this. This is an accredited module, but it's very much about self-development. And basically, it's a bridge between, it's giving you a bridge between the two worlds of academia and business. So it's it's kind of getting you over to the other side in order to fulfill your career potential. So there's a lot of working in terms, there's a lot of work in terms of self-development. Uh, Bernie does psychometric testing. She does lots of different workshops um, to elicit where your skills are in terms, particularly in terms of your leadership, the qualities, your leadership skills, the qualities that you would need to be an effective global leader. And then, you know, we all have strengths and weaknesses and just seeing where everybody's on, um, in terms of the, the scale and then working with you on a one to one basis in order to elevate the qualities or the, the aspects of your your leadership competency that you're weak in to maybe, you know, get you up to get you up to where you need to be, as I said, in terms of what employers would expect from an MBA graduate. And um, there's also really practical, um, you know, practical workshops, you know, in terms of even your CV, your presentation skills, mock interviews, uh, case studies, you know, there, there's so much that it encompasses and it's really, really beneficial. Um, there's also introductions to corporate, you know, to, to corporate links to potential employers. Um, you also get a mentor that ideally Bernie tries to match you with a mentor that is coming from the sector or is in the sector that you would like to um, work in eventually and that mentor works with you over a number of months as well to you know to to, to again get your you know um, develop your skills help you to develop your skills up to the level that they need to be or you're learning up to the level it needs to be to work in that particular area. Um, but as I said, it's uh, it's unique to the UCD MBA and I know our students really value it and it definitely increases their employability at the end of the programme. Uh, next slide, please. These are just some statistics um, on our, you know, previous MBA classes. Uh, this was actually from 22-23. So the average GMAT was 680. We had 40% female students, 53 males. So you can see that it's, it's quite balanced. On the full-time uh, MBA, 80% of the classes, approximately 80% is uh, international. I can tell you this incoming class for 2024, we have recruited or quite advanced in terms of recruitment at this for this stage of the year but the class at the moment is composed of um a number of indian students we have a number of chinese students we have a contingent from the usa we have a gentleman from canada we have someone from mexico we have somebody from taiwan we have uh, a lady from france at the moment and uh, and we have a number of irish students so that's what it looks like right now so you get a flavor of the the, the cultural diversity of the class uh, the average uh, the average student in the MBA class has about seven years work experience and you really need a minimum of five at this stage um, to, um, to, 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 to be considered uh, seriously, I suppose, for an MBA, to be honest with you. The average age is about 30. Uh, in 22, 23, 90% of the graduates were employed within three months and there's on average, our students have a growth in earnings of about 74 percent. Now, that depends on your own background in terms of what you've done before, um, you know, where you're at in your career and the, obviously the type of job that you get, the type of employment that you get after the MBA. So 74 percent mightn't be realistic straight away after the MBA, but within, you know, one to three years, it, it absolutely should be. Um, and then you can just see again a number of the employers that our graduates have gained employment with, particularly from that class 22, 23. Um, next slide, please. Again, we have mentioned this already, but um, where UCD is the number one graduate it came first, sorry, in graduate employability uh, for in Ireland, 2018, 19, 20, 21 and 22, um, five years in a row. So the average employability rate, again, is 96% overall. Now, that would be across the university that's in, in all programmes. 
Next slide, please. Okay. So just in terms of the MBA, what does it do for you? You know, how does it enhance your skills in terms of what employers want? So we try and develop the skills that we have found out that employers want. And how we do that is by, you know, every, companies today, as you all are well aware of, you know, are very multi multicultural and international in terms of their focus and their scope. So, you you know, in most companies these days, you need to appreciate different cultures and backgrounds and ways of doing business, which we've touched on. Um, so we really work on that with, with uh, our MBA class, that they are ready to go into a multicultural environment and be, you know, as effective as they possibly can be. We also teach our students to learn critically. There, a lot of the teaching is done in terms of the case study method. Um, and our faculty are, uh, many of our faculty are, you know, leaders in their own sectors outside of the university. And they come in to, to teach our MBA class. So a very high quality uh, a very high level in terms of the quality in terms of our teaching staff and then as we've already talked about earlier we develop leaders that's what you know the MBA program is mainly about it's developing global leaders and you know providing our students with the leadership skills in order to be you know effective and competent in a global leadership role next slide please Okay, and this is just uh, a quick example of one of our alumni, Jasmine Westbrooks. Um, and this is a quote from Jasmine. As a former full-time student, the UCD MBA provided me with the opportunities to build on my prior business knowledge, grow my network and refine my leadership style. As a result of completing my MBA, I successfully pivoted my career and more importantly, developed lifelong relationships with my classmates. So as you can see, Jasmine is now working in corporate strategy as an associate manager at S. Centre. And that's just an example, a typical example, I suppose, of uh, one of our MBA graduates from UCD Smurfit. Next slide, please. OK, just a little bit about sustainability in terms of Smurfit uh, and UCD in terms of business leadership. It's There's obviously a huge focus on su sustainability and will that will only be more progressive over the next number of years forever, I guess. So we are we have you know, a green campus initiative, um, including biodiversity, waste reduction, sustainable commuting energy and energy efficiency. I know there's lots of bike schemes available and we've, as I said, internally, a lot of initiatives just to to cut down on waste and, you know, have a, 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 encourage the circular economy as much as we can. And um, because we take it very seriously, we have a VP for sustainability and we also have uh, the UCD Earth Institute, which is heavily involved in, in green policies and, you know, finding ways to be more sustainable. And that's part of our, our university overall. Um, and then we have some leading researches in sustainable, sustainable fashion supply chain greenwash detection and lots of other um, aspects that, you know, are part of the the green conversation. So it's very important to us. Next slide, please. Okay, and this continuing on from the, the green conversation, we're in the global top 25 sustainability universities and international leadership. We were rated top tier gold category in on environmental impact in the QS World University rankings in 2022. Um, and ranked 22nd in the T Irish Times Higher Education Impact Ranking, which is very, again, it's just um, indicative and it verifies our commitment to green and, uh, you know, as I said, being as sustainable as possible. Next slide, please. OK, now I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Yo Lamar, who's our International Student Support Officer. And Yola is going to talk about moving to Dublin. Thank you so Thank much, Mairead. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here and I'm delighted to see how many of you have joined today's session. So you're very welcome. And I'll take you very briefly through, um, um, I guess, relocation to Dublin and to Ireland and just moving um, to become a UCD student. If we could move to another slide, please. OK, so um, there is a very um, 
heavy um, support, or not maybe heavy, quite uh, detailed and exhaustive support that students are provided with. We do a lot of support for students before they arrive. So we call it an onboarding journey. So anybody who applies and is offered a place, whether it's a conditional offer or whether it's a full offer, um, they're already considered here. So they're considered UCD students. So what we do is we interact with students before you guys come here. We have, we're planning for webinars, for drop-in clinics. I am, I'm available to any international student who is um, has any questions about um, you know moving to Ireland? How do I arrange accommodation? What's the first thing to do? How should I structure my you know how should I plan my arrival? All these um, questions are answered for you guys by uh, the handbook, the webinars, the drop-in sessions. There's quite a lot of support, and it's quite unique for UCD. When you look at other universities, there is much less uh, of such support. I think it's quite important because it's that kind of reassurance and knowing that you belong somewhere and there's somebody there to help you so if you are looking for uh, for support uh, sort of locally where you live currently if you do live outside of ireland we have five um what we call ucd global centers and they're kind of, they're located all over the world there's one um, that we call asia pacific there's one in china there is an office um, um, in, that covers Middle East, Africa, and Pakistan. And we also have offices in North America, covering all North America and also South Asia. So our UCD colleagues are actually based abroad to support students locally. So you can drop in and meet them. They have pre they organize pre-departure and um, information sessions. But on top of it, the second layer of support is, is me here in UCD Smurfit School. So I look, I'm specifically looking after the Smurfit students only, which is really good to have somebody um, who is a familiar face, who can help you, can answer your questions. We also have a student advisor who looks after students um, mostly post arrival. If if any students deal with any difficulties or struggle anything, this uh, with anything, the system is really good. It's a really 360 support that we have here for you guys. Um, additionally, I am I'm finalizing the international students handbook as well that has I think about 60 pages. So it's like a little book that covers um, all the stages uh, for you to when you go through and planning your your relocation and also kind of a post arrival support as well. So if you could move to another slide, the next slide, please. I, OK, so the last thing I would like to say to you is mention for those of you guys who are holders of non-EU passports. So anybody who holds a passport from outside the EU, normally you would need to apply for working rights permit here in Ireland. But having complete, completed a master's program, whether it's MBA or MSc program here in Smurfit School, you're entitled to apply for what we call a stay back visa. There's a couple of names for them, but I think stay back is the, quite the most popular name. It's also called Stamp 1G. So basically this, um, it's called a residence permission. So you're permitted to stay in Ireland for two years. Um, and work um, full time. OK, so it's a really excellent opportunity for you guys. It's like a bridging permission between you being a student. And then if you join an organization and they apply for your work permit, um, they will be able to take a veil of your um, of you being able, available to work for two years prior to kind of a, a further commitment in your career. Initially, that permission is given for 12 months and after 12 months is, is extended again. So that's a really good opportunity. That's something that you should also consider, you know, when you're planning or that you come to Ireland, what program to do. That's something that you could keep in your mind that if you want to um, settle here in Ireland, get a job. And it's a very vibrant economy, as Mairead mentioned. That's also an opportunity um, to, to consider. So um, I think that's probably it from me. Um, I'm going to stay behind. And if there's any questions afterwards, I'll be more than happy to answer them. So I'm, um, I'm giving it back to Marie. Marie, it's over back to you. Thank you. Now, I think Marie will talk to you about the criteria um, applying for the program. Um, she'll talk you through the actual documents you need to submit. 
the experience you need to have um, and all other kind of documents that are needed. Over to you, Marit. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Yola. Yes, just very quickly, guys, because I'm conscious of the time. Um, we You firstly need a university degree, uh, an undergraduate. It doesn't need to be in business. It can be in any discipline. It needs to be realistically at least a 2-1 or the equivalent. We require a minimum of five years quality professional experience. And what I mean by that is five years, you know, postgraduate experience, not including internships or part-time jobs or that that, that those type of roles it needs to be you know where you're working in a full-time job in the area that uh you know your your career is in basically and um, you need a competitive gmat score or an executive assessment score either or most of our international students do the gmat if you're not sure what this is uh you know contact me afterwards and i can um, help you about that but most people who do an mba understand what a GMAT is because it's used in uh, business schools all around the world. Uh, you need two completed recommendation forms. The template is provided in the on the application portal and it goes directly to your referee and they send it back. They just press a button and it comes straight back to us. You need an English language test uh, if you are, you know, don't speak or don't come from a country that where the where English is the native language or alternatively you don't need one, say, for instance, if you've worked in a country for five years at that uh, in an English speaking environment, essentially. But again, I can go through any of this information with you directly if um, if you're not sure and you need um, clarification. So you need to complete your application form and you need a current CV. You also need, you know, a photograph um, and uh, you're at the first page of your passport, essentially, to verify your identity. Next slide, please. OK, just quickly to talk about the scholarships that we have here at Smurfit. There is a variety of scholarships that would be um, available to you. We have the full time MBA Regional Excellence Scholarship, Women on the MBA Scholarship, EDI Scholarship for US students. But that's not actually exclusively for US students. So, you know, it can be for from for students from all all uh, countries essentially we have an entrepreneurial scholarship and we have um the gmat mba scholarship which is very important i think in terms of our audience today because a lot of our international students get very high gmat scores the higher your gmat score the more likely it is that you will get a gmat mba scholarship uh, they vary in terms of uh, the value so some of them can be worth uh, 100%, some of them can be worth 50, some of them can be worth 40%. It really depends. Um, again, I'm happy to talk to anybody offline about this directly um, and indicate to you, you know, wh what it might look like for yourself. Next slide, please. OK, and now we're on to our panel discussion. So if uh, Purvav and Marata and Sigar, if you'd like to... Come live with me. <laughs> we'll have a chat. Thank you, guys. Thanks for coming on today. Really appreciate it. Um, no, so no I suppose, worries. um, as um, Carolina said earlier, uh, or Yola, that what I suppose we'd like to elicit today, or have you chat about, is, you know, if you were going back to this time last year and you did. You know, you you mentioned uh, Ben Marata. You said you you did a webinar like this. Is there any information that wasn't covered today or wasn't clear that you know you would like to have known this time last year? Basically, does that make sense? I've asked that very poorly, but is there anything in particular that you wished you'd known last year before you came here to Smurfit? We we'll start with Ben Marata. Okay, thanks, Maureen. Um I, like you said, I have attended one of these webinars in the past and it was quite informative. Um, I think one of the things that I actually found out and I was pleasantly surprised was uh, a bit more information on the international trips. I had obviously heard about this in the webinar, but when I actually came in here is when I realized just how uh, impactful and significant these international trips are and the places that we go, is it's absolutely amazing. So um, I think that was a very good add-on and a surprise for me and um, something that I Think every student can leverage from so this is a really good aspect for me and also in terms of the alumni network it's insane the amount of networking and connections you can get just by being a ucd student um so that was something that was absolutely beneficial for me and i um i'm very grateful for this so yeah these are the two points from my side 
Thank you, Vinrata. So you're looking forward to Singapore in a couple of weeks. 100%. <laughs> Very good. And uh, Purva, what yes. would you like to have known this time last year? Yeah, so uh, as Vinamrita said, a little bit more about the international trips, but uh, I think a more focus uh, could be given on the networking events that uh, Bernie arranges here in the campus, wherein we can reach out to uh, the offices as well as to the people who are working there, the alumni who have already studied here a couple of years back and the mentorship program which uh, currently I'm doing so uh, it's a great help uh, from, from the school to, towards me so I think uh, a more information about mentorship how they align and uh, choose a mentor for you uh, that really helps you to find a career uh, after your MBA thank you so much and Sekar finally uh, yes uh First of all, yeah, I think most of the things were covered by Vinamrata and Purva. But here's the thing. I mean, I did not expect that the careers will be such a focus here. And when I landed here, the kind of focus and kind of attention that Bernie is giving, you know, is giving to us, not just giving to us, she's actually working with us. That, that she wants. And, you know, the entire career section and the school wants us to succeed in terms of getting our jobs because... Uh, that is that is something very important for all the students who are incoming. And believe me, the support that we are getting is immense. It's, it's splendid. That is something giving us more confidence that after six months when we are out of the MBA, the confidence is there. Yes, we will be able to get the job or get the employment that we are looking for. So that is one area which is completely safe really for us. Yes, that's super. Thank you, guys. They're, that they're really good answers, really interesting answers, should I say, and giving you know people that don't know it an insight. Um, I suppose the the obvious question then as well: Why did you all choose Ireland? And when you choose, if you chose Ireland, how come you choose? What, what influenced you to choose Smirket? So, if we start with you, Purva, please. Yes. Um. Uh, to start with, I think I have uh, four years of experience in education, and I wanted to switch my industry. I wanted to move into healthcare, and as you earlier said, uh, Ireland is a hub for healthcare companies. If you take Pfizer, Johnson Johnson, MedTech company, AstraZeneca, all the top-notch companies have their offices here in Ireland. So it would be a great opportunity for me to work in one of these companies uh given that my mba given my uh, i apply my mba skills and uh, learn from more from it and regarding why ireland i think um, in the europe it's apart from i think netherlands it's the country with like which teaches in english and the language is english it's communicated in english right so it becomes easy for the international students to reach out and uh, as mentioned uh, in the alumni network, there are a lot of alumni who have been placed in uh, Roche, Novartis, which are pharmaceutical companies. So I looked out for them and uh, that's why I chose you, Susan Moffat. Very good, very good. And Segar, what influenced you? Yeah, so first of all, I was looking at, you know, the great business schools and I was researching online at Smurfit's name, came out, you know, it was coming out of, out from the word of mouth. It was more than the marketing, the word of mouth actually hit me, hit me very strongly. And that is the reason why I came to Smurfit. And I, I had, I mean, I had actually, you know, conversations with a lot of, uh, you know, past my, my friends who have come to Ireland and have done their master's here. And they spoke really high of UCD Smurfit. So that is one thing that hit me because it was word of mouth and more trustworthy. And in terms of why did I choose Ireland in terms of the country, again, financial company, FinTech, uh, you know, this is this is a country which is especially Dublin, all companies, investment companies like talk about Davy, talk about JP Morgan, they, they have their offices here. So I am from the finance background. So my mind connected directly like English speaking country, you have financial hub over here. Uh, you are actually getting good word out of, you know, the connections that you have already in the island. So all these culminated into, you know, making the decision why is more fit and why Ireland. Very good. And Vimrasha? 
Oh, thank you. So for me, similar to Purva, in terms of choosing Ireland is uh, because I had a specific focus on European um, universities and obviously Ireland stood out just because of the fact that it's the um, only country that speaks, that uh, has English as its uh, main speaking language. And um, in terms of why Smurfit, I think adding on to everything that um, Burva and Sagar said, for me, it was also the curriculum that really stood out. Um, I was very focused on to, uh, what kind of, what would I gain out of the MBA once I'm done with all the business schools that I've shortlisted. And um, the curriculum that Smurfit offered was really stood out to me in terms of all the, touching on all the various um, business uh, acumen that I can, that I can get out of this. And also um, the international trips, obviously um, the, uh, the GNAM network, I think that was one of the things that really stood out to me because I have a focus on digital transformation and that's something that UCD offered as part of their GNAM. Um, so all of these factors really stood out to me and that's, we made my decision easier in choosing UCD as my university Very. choice. Very good. Uh, thank you, guys. Um, can I ask you a little bit about how you have found like the, the cultural diversity, I suppose, within your both your class and within Smurfit? And, you know, how has that benefited your learning? I guess because, you know, there's a lot of peer to peer learning on the, the MBA and that's across cultural backgrounds, across sectoral backgrounds, across academic backgrounds, you know. So if you could just comment on that to me and if there was if you found the benefit of that mixing with lots of different people from from different uh, countries, essentially. Um, we we'll start with Tegar today, this time. Thank you so much. So yes, uh, first of all, I was really surprised by cultural, you know, background that we had in the class because when I started talking to the different people from different countries, I started understanding their minds, and that is very important. You know, multiple minds actually culminate to your own personal growth. Growth. So that, that was brilliant. Like today I'm talking to one person who is from China, one person who is from Africa, who is one person who is from US, Canada. So that is how personal growth actually reflects. And second thing, the, during the GNA, we already had cultural backgrounds, you know, professional backgrounds. But when global GNA happened in uh, October, during that time, again, more diversity came onto the campus. We had the opportunity to talk to even people from more diversity, from different colleges around the world, again, from different backgrounds, different experiences. So this is learning. This is real learning, real growth of a person that comes from cultural backgrounds. So my experience till now has been fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Brilliant. Thank you. And for the Marasha? Uh, very similar to what Sagar said, it was it's been it's been amazing. We have our cohort is a mix of a lot of various um, nationalities and culture, which as we celebrated, uh, we have a cultural club as part of our MBA and we celebrated the Chinese New Year. We have celebrated Diwali. We're going to hopefully celebrate um, St. Patrick's Day as well. Like we're going to celebrate all of these things and come together. So it's, it's absolutely amazing. Um, I'm not going to add on as Sagar as we mentioned, Gina was again one of the factors. And I think Ireland as a whole is it's been very welcoming for us international students. Um I have I feel like Irish people are very, very nice and very kind. And they're super helpful. Even from my first um journey from the airport to our campus in a taxi, the the uh the person who was bringing me here was so nice and just kept talking to me about everything and wanted to show me all of Ireland. So I think there's a bit of pride that comes in, but generally Irish people are really nice and very accommodating. So that was a very positive change as well for me. Phew, that's good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> and uh poor back. What would you say yeah, uh, yeah uh, I think more or less uh, Vinamrit and Sagar covered everything. But yeah, to uh, focus on the point where Vinamrita said, yeah, the people here are very friendly and accommodating. So uh, I have also experienced that. Uh, talking about the diversity in the class, yeah, I reach out to uh, my Irish classmates, uh, 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 African classmates, they have their different point of views. We had this, we had economics as a subject. Everybody has their different views about their country, their culture, and what exactly is happening there, what should work out, what should not work out. So, uh, in a whole, yeah, it, it has been an amazing journey, and I've been reaching out to multiple people on LinkedIn. Uh, so, yeah. Super. Um, guys, we're, we're short on time at the moment, so I just want to say thank you very much, ladies and gents. I'm sure that insight was much more valuable than anything I could tell any prospective students. Um, and we really appreciate your, your time, I suppose, this afternoon. Um, just very quickly, before we finish up, we have some questions from our 
um, participants. Um, so Yola, I might include you in these as well. Somebody has asked about uh, the GMAT. I know I, I kind of didn't spend much time talking about that, but basically if I, what I'll do is I'll send out my email address. So if you have any specific questions, you can just email me. It's mulvey at uh, ucd.ie. But um, I will talk to you specifically about the GMAT. But Yola, there's one question here that you might be able to answer just in terms of extracurricular activities and, um, you know, what there is to do in Smurfit and UCD for students outside of the classroom. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so this UCD Smurfit School is part of the larger UCD University, University College Dublin, where we have over 35,000 students. So it's a huge university, the largest in the whole country. Um, the choice of activities is really up to you. Whether you would like to take up sports, um, we have over 70 sports and societies, and they're all based on the main campus, which is three kilometers away from Blackrock. We have a shuttle bus, and there's also free biking scheme for anybody who wants to maybe in the evening um, or early in the morning hop on a bike and go to the gym. We have a huge gym. Uh, which is uh, with the largest pool. And I know, I think, Marit, we're under, under pressure, so maybe I should scale down my story. But basically, um, there's a lot to offer on the main campus in terms of social activities, getting involved in societies, whether you love anything very specific or whether it's kind of you generally just want to meet people in a social um, kind of um, environment as well. On top of it, in school, we have um, the student union quite active, organizing quite a few activities and events. Um, as one of the students mentioned, um, later today, we're celebrating the Year of the Dragon. So there's a big party uh, with uh, lovely performances and beautiful food from, we are the, currently we have five countries, uh, students coming from five countries celebrating um, the, the, the new year according to lunar calendar. So that's quite a large event. So there's social events. There's also a lot of talks from um, from different kind of business, um, business sides of things, business sectors. So to be honest with you, there's a lot of going on. Um, I do know that MBA program is incredible incredibly busy. Anytime I bumped into an MBA student, they just go, I am so busy. Oh, there's like so many balls up in the air. I'm just busy, busy, busy. So don't worry, you'll be kept quite busy, but there's loads of opportunities to do stuff outside of the program as well, meet other people and engage in other activities as well. I hope to answer the question back to Marit. Thank you, Yola. Yes, we're very conscious of the time at this stage. Um, there, I what I've done is I've sent my email address out to everybody who's attended today. Again, thank you. I have somebody here that says they have fifteen years of work experience. Would they be, you know, would they be keen to pursue the MBA? The MBA, absolutely. We would very much welcome people that have, you know, additional work experience more than the seven years. And yes, you would absolutely be uh, very attractive to any employer with that amount of experience and an MBA. There's specific questions, as I said, about the GMAT and the IELTS test. I'm happy to answer those uh, directly. Uh, what are the application deadlines for international students? Um, I would recommend getting your application in sooner rather than later. Our MBA class is, you know, we, we are probably about 70% full at this stage for the incoming year, but we're still very much welcoming applications. So please do apply. Um, and I'm just, there. there's a question here. Do you support students in finding a job after graduation? We absolutely do. Our panel today explained about the careers manager and, you know, that that whole support service and what it does for them. But that, Ber that Lady Bernie is also available to all our graduates three years after graduation as well to support them um, subsequently. So we are just coming up uh, to 3 p.m. And um, again, I would just like to thank you for attending today. Really welcomed your questions. Very happy to discuss uh, any other questions you have or give you any clarity on any aspects of today's webinar one-to-one. Uh, -one. That's no problem. Um, again, to thank my colleagues, Yola, uh, Carolina and Gillian. And also to really, my sincere thanks to our panel today, Ben Rasha, Purva and Sagar. You were really superb. And I think our, um, our audience really appreciated your input. So once again, everyone, thank you so much for everything today. Bye-bye.